What's up party people, Talbot Walker, back in effect. I'm here, back in Ecuador. I've been going to the States the last three years, coming back here, dialing in this mushroom operation. So here I am, all right? I'm just back from the States. I'm gonna flip the switch on this mushroom operation. And so I'm gonna show you step by step, video by video, about how I turn this mushroom operation back on. All right, so you can check it out, it's interesting. All right, so this is the backside of my laboratory, the main, crux of a actual mushroom operation is your laboratory, all right? You will find if you're a home grower, you don't necessarily need a laboratory, you can order spawn from somebody who has one, like myself, but I have a lab, and I'm gonna show you how we use it and how we start. So the, the main apparatus here, one of the main apparatus is your air filtration system. The lab basically is a clean, sterile environment, keeping all these baddies out, all these mold, bacteria, fungal spores that are floating around the air, and this, is a filtration system that is pumping in clean air. So I'm gonna show you what that entails, and I'm gonna clean it and get it back in operation. So first things first, I've got these dusty, dusty, dusty pre-filters behind them on my second pre-filter. So I'm gonna take those off and clean them. All right, here we are. Pulled those pre-filters off yesterday, cleaned them up real nice, they're over there drying, soaked a lot of dust out of there. Basically, it's like four little fuzzy filter pads that pull out a lot of the dust to try to add a little longevity to this filter. That's kind of the name of the game. Is It's a bunch of series of filter adding longevity through all your filter stage. The last one being a HEPA filter. Mine is a 12 inch thick HEPA filter. Those are somewhat spendy and I'd like it to last as long as it possibly could. So all your pre-filters are protecting that. Also, I'm protecting a little bit my squirrel cage blower that provides the, uh, the airflow here. These are obviously on the suction side. I've got two, two flow possibilities. All righty, y'all, here we are. I pulled off that filter. You can see the uh, backside of the other filter. I've almost got that off. Um, but yeah, just want to show you inside. So this is a blower. When buying a blower, it's very important to uh, spec out the right specs. You're gonna have to do a little math. It's gotta be able to blow against resistance. All right, so this has 1.2 inch static pressure resistance. So that means it can handle the resistance of all these filters, mainly the HEPA filter. And this is basically the workhorse of the lab. It's providing the lab to be positive pressured and filtered air. So basically positive pressure means that it's uh, the pressure inside the lab is greater than outside, so air is actually blowing out any hole. Of course, everything is ideally sealed up, so really the only holes are under the door jams, and it's actually kind of physically hard to shut the door or open the door, depending on which door it is. I have three doors just to get into this thing. Um, and so the positive pressure means no floaters can accidentally like float in the door jam or it actually resists a lot of insects from going in and then you have sticky mats as well. It's a full on operation here gang. Um, so this is the inside here. So yeah it gives you a little good idea. It's a nice big blower. All right so what's behind the door? Bang. This is the push side of the filtration system. This is another pre-filter. And this is the HEPA filter. Boom, thick, beefy, true HEPA filter. This thing is a foot thick of glorious happiness. Oh. So that thing, as you can see right here, is 99.99% efficiency. It says it's somewhere in here. All right, just trust me on that one. And um, yeah, this is the main thing. So this is blowing out this way, boom, and into the lab, um, where that lab is nice and clean. This bad boy right here is a little bit more of a thick filter than this one, or not thick, but it's rated, I think, at 60%. I'm not quite sure either, but um, it's a step up from this, and then I even get wild, and I've got one of these uh, UV lights in here to uh, if I need to kill anything in there. It's not totally necessary, but it's there, and I've left it there. And then from down in there, that's where the blower pushes out. So down in here, it pushes out, goes up through here, push, 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 through here, and into the lab. So basically what I'm going to do here is I want to change out this filter to protect this one. Um, you can see I got my seals, so when the door shuts, it lines up right on that. So I got my new filter in there. This HEPA I replaced last year. Um, actually, I replaced two years ago. This thing will last for a while as long as I keep these uh, pre-filters clean and rolling. It'll protect this big guy. And um, yeah, I dropped a little bead of uh, you know silicone on these things. I seal all the edges with silicone so nothing can get around the outside. And now I'm ready to shut the door. That's right. Close it back up. So after I get this thing sealed back up, um, I'm gonna get these pre-filters back on, and then uh, it's ready to go, except I want that silicone to dry. So I'm gonna let that silicone dry at least overnight. I probably won't crank this thing on until tomorrow, maybe the next day. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is video number two. That's cleaning the lab. We're talking about a level of cleanliness 
that only the world of fungus knows. And maybe like uh, computer building and stuff like that. So, yeah. Stay tuned when I turn this bad boy on. <laughs>